Hey YouTube, it's ACU and today we have some very important updates to discuss in the realm of jailbreaking. It's been a while and I wanted to talk to you guys about the latest Pangu jailbreak utility for iOS 9.1, why it was even released for 9.1 and not a newer firmware such as iOS 9.2, 9.2.1, the latest public firmware, or even the upcoming iOS 9.3 firmware. We're going to talk about what the heck Pangu was thinking, why they didn't just wait, what we can expect from jailbreaking moving forward. There are a couple of other things I wanted to throw into the mix as well, and we're going to discuss some new developments. First though, Pebble V Stone sent me out a few of these. They're called stones, but really they're smart shortcuts in a world ruled by automation and the internet of things. They let you accomplish quick tasks on your phone without actually performing them yourself. For example, if you're in a business meeting or on a date and you want to get out quick, Stone can be configured to send out a fake phone call to your phone simply by pushing it. There are hundreds of various situations when you want to use your phone, but it may be inaccessible or just plain faster to use the Pebble V Stone. How about when driving or when in bed and your phone is across the room? Just press the button and it can do anything ranging from locating your phone to turning off your lights and so much more. Best of all, you don't even need the app to be open or even to have your phone unlocked. And that's not even a fraction of what it can do either. Connected to IFTTT, you can do anything. They retail for only $30, which is a steal for how widely versatile they are. Check it out at pebblebee.com. Use the link on your screens now. All right, now let's get into this. For those of you who don't know, recently Pangu did release a brand new update to their Pangu 9 jailbreak utility, which now includes support for iOS 9.1, but not any firmware that's even remotely current, unfortunately. So it does not support 9.2.1, the latest public firmware as of recording this video. We're going to talk about why that is in just a second. But first of all, Pangu recently updated their utility again since they added support for iOS 9.1 and we're going to briefly talk about that. So we're just here on Pangu's official changelog and as you can see for version 1.3.1, the latest iteration, they simply state that it makes the untether of iOS 9.1 more stable. That's a direct quote. Now if you are lucky enough to be on iOS 9.1 and you're already jailbroken, then you don't have to re-jailbreak. All you have to do is just launch up Cydia, go to the changes tab at the bottom and you should see an available update for the Pangu 9.0.x untether package that was installed when you actually jailbroke your device on iOS 9.1. When we scroll down here, the latest update, so as you can see version 1.3 reads, quote, Version 1.3 of this package makes the untether boot quickly more often on iOS 9.1 by making the exploit more reliable and able to retry more quickly. Users of iOS 9.0 should not see any difference at all. So me, I'm on iOS 9.0.2. It doesn't really matter. I can update, but it's not going to affect anything. However, if you are on iOS 9.1, you were experiencing issues or you have experienced issues with it rebooting slowly or not wanting to come back up or in a pseudo boot loop mode because believe it or not some devices actually throw up kind of a fake boot loop then this will remedy that and if you are currently stuck in what appears to be a boot loop just keep trying to reboot and eventually it should come back up once it does all you have to do is launch up Cydia and install this you'll be good to go if you're a brand new jailbreaker on iOS 9.1 just ensure that you download the latest version of Pangu again 1.3.1 my tutorial has been updated to to include that. Also, since I actually recorded for that tutorial, the Mac version was not stable yet. It wasn't out, so now it is. Now it's public. Now we have the latest iteration of that as well. Again, you can check out my tutorial if you have yet to jailbreak on iOS 9.1, whether you're on Windows or a Mac like what I have right here. Now let's get into why they even released this in the first place, because this is absolutely key, guys. Understanding this will help you out so much. There's so many toxic jailbreakers out there right now, upset that they cannot jailbreak their device on either iOS 9.2 or 9.2.1. And of course, 9.3 once that's released to the public, which is expected very soon next week, actually. All right, so the answer as to why they did this is very simple. This actually wasn't their exploit. Sure, they actually bundled everything together and tested it on devices. But other than that, they didn't actually do the work required to discover the primary kernel exploit. So when we launch up Twitter here, I actually just have a separate tab open. Let's navigate to it to Pangu's official 
official Twitter account, you can see they tweeted out the following. Pangu 9 version 1.3 used a kernel bug from Loki Heart to exploit iOS 9.1, and the bug is patched in iOS 9.2. Thanks, Loki Heart, for helping. So this is what I was talking about, guys. This exploit was actually patched, again, in iOS 9.2, and they had it anyway. Loki Heart passed it along to Pangu. We don't know the direct details, but he probably said something like, hey, I have this kernel exploit. Can you do anything with it? It only functions functions on iOS 9.1, so they put in the time required to actually bundle it into their Pangu 9 jailbreak for support with iOS 9.1, and then released it out to the public. And of course, they since updated it and made it more stable once they discovered those pseudo boot loop errors. So they didn't really waste much time implementing support for iOS 9.1 because the kernel bug was the main thing that was patched in iOS 9.1 when Apple closed the original 9.0.x jailbreak. Now I have the security contents of iOS 9.1, 9.2, and 9.2.1, the latest public firmware open right here, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I mean. So you can find these documents yourselves if you want to confirm just by searching for something like iOS 9.1 security, you can do the same for the latest firmware 9.2.1. So what we're going to do is just search for the term Pangu right here, and when we do that, we're going to just tap on find on page, there are only two things related to the Pangu 9 jailbreak that Apple actually publicly patched in iOS 9.1. You can see we have config D here, but really the main thing is actually this kernel exploit. So for the description, it reads a memory corruption issue existed in the kernel. This issue was addressed through improved memory handling. That's the primary exploit, and that's one of the hardest things to discover. Again, Loki Heart passed them along the new exploit that's used for iOS 9.1 that does not work beyond 9.1. So that enables them to actually continue to work on future jailbreak utilities for something like iOS 9.3 while still appeasing those who unfortunately were stuck on iOS 9.1 without a jailbreak. However, that of course quickly became unpopular amongst those stuck on iOS 9.2 or higher. So unfortunately, we're just going to have to wait, but rest assured, this is not the end of jailbreaking. They're still working on new utilities, and the only reason this was released is because they didn't spend the time actually researching and discovering this primary exploit. If we navigate over here to the security contents of iOS 9.2 and we search for Pangu, you'll notice that we have even more things patched beyond those two. We have three additional exploits patched here because they don't mention the other two that were patched in iOS 9.2. Point one, you can see find on page we have three different vulnerabilities. And when we switch on over to the final one here, we do have some other security improvements. However, no direct Pangu 9 jailbreak exploits were patched. But guys, these are some absolutely key exploits as Luca Tedesco and others have actually highlighted previously. Some of these could be extremely helpful in the creation and release of a new jailbreak utility. So that's why we have a jailbreak on iOS 9.1 because the bug exists solely for 9.1. So that's why we have a jailbreak for iOS 9.1. As I mentioned though, rest assured jailbreakers including Pangu as well as Taiji are working on new jailbreak utilities post iOS 9.1 and even 9.2.1. Remember I've said for quite some time now they've really had their sights set on iOS 9.3. That appears to be the end game for iOS 9 until we then get iOS 10. And the reason for that is because iOS 10 is right around the corner. What I mean by that is eventually Apple is going to stop developing for iOS 9 and devote the majority of their attention to iOS 10 and releasing new beta iterations of iOS 10 come this summer. Remember the first beta of iOS 10 will likely be released at WWDC like what's happened with each major firmware before it. So that's not too far off. We're in March right now. June is coming up quick. And there's also some talk that an individual does have a jailbreak complete. I'm not going to mention his name in today's video simply because he has not proven himself. And believe it or not, screenshots are not proof. So please don't say in the comment section he's tweeted out proof that he does indeed have a jailbreak because he really hasn't. Screenshots can easily be faked just because it looks proper and legitimate doesn't mean that it actually is. Until someone proves themselves in the realm of jailbreaking, we really won't know for sure. Remember those fakes you started to pop up throughout the jailbreak blogosphere? Well, every single one ended up being fake. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I will have a direct link in your cards right now. And so that may be something that we want to keep our eye on moving forward, but as of now, I don't see that as being something official or something that we can actually count on to be released. Again, we should keep our attention 
attention pointed toward Taiji as well as Pangu. They're the two official jailbreak developers currently on the scene right now. And I also wanted to mention something pretty interesting that Luca Tedesco recently released. It is essentially a code signing bypass, and some of you were under the impression that that could be utilized for a new jailbreak. Unfortunately, so much more would actually be required, and we still wouldn't even have a kernel exploit. Chances are good though that either Pangu or Taiji has something up their sleeves and they actually have a zero day kernel exploit, which is what we really need right now. So I hope you guys like this video, just letting you know what's going on, kind of updating you and informing you of the current jailbreak situation as it stands in March. Remember, iOS 9.3 will likely be released following Apple's March 21st media event this coming Monday. So I will have additional details for you guys then. But as of now, this is everything you need to know. Click the subscribe button below next to my channel name. That way you will be completely updated moving forward. Also, don't forget to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for even more updates. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Join the iCrack Your Device community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.